This episode of Tea with Jewels is proudly brought to you by The Home. You can shop any of the items you'll see in this episode at thehome.com.au. In this episode of Tea with Jules, I am chatting with a woman in charge, Naomi Simpson. She's an entrepreneur, she's an author, a speaker, a LinkedIn influencer, a TV personality, and a mother. Best known as the founder of the online experience redballoon.com.au, Naomi has worlds of experience in the business arena. Having written over a thousand blog posts on her blog, naomisimpson.com, and with a reach that extends to two million people on LinkedIn, Naomi is a true online digital influencer. Today, I wanna find out from Naomi what it's like being a woman in charge. She's managed to forge a path and find huge success in so many different arenas. My burning questions for her are, can women have it all? And what makes someone a really great leader? I cannot wait to talk to Naomi today and if you're a budding business person you will catch some gold dust from this woman. Here is Naomi Simpson. Hey Jules. Naomi Simpson. I had the pleasure of meeting you last year, Yeah. end of last year, where we did a live tea with Jules. We with did. the lovely Emma Isaac. Okay. It's amazing. But I must say when I knew I was going to talk to you I felt very nervous and intimidated because you're so awesome. And then when I met you, I was like, oh, she's so she's nice. great. Yeah, we it, had the best time ever. It is funny when people meet me, they go, you're not so scary. No, you're yeah. actually not. Yeah. You're lovely. Oh, so welcome. You. Are you a tea drinker? Uh, I only herbal teas. Yeah. So I'm a peppermint tea girl. Absolutely okay. love it. And there's a tea with peppermint and lavender, which is really quite special. Well, yeah. on that note, we've got peppermint tea. Now, fantastic. Naomi, you are uh, probably best known for um, being the founder, starter, creator of Red Balloon, mm. which is an online destination experience uh, where you can go on and buy gifts for people where they can jump out of a plane or they can... Do a chocolate walking tour. Do a chocolate mm. walking tour. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, that's, what I guess, what you're best known for amongst so many other things. You always wear red every <laughs> single day. Yeah. Red lips and a red a splash of red somewhere. Today there's a lot of red, so that's awesome. So why red? So it is funny because some I was literally out and about doing a speaking engagement, and I'm talking about more than ten years ago, and it's chat, chat, chatting, and I just happened to be wearing red, and someone said, "You look really good in red." And I go, "Oh, okay." And then it just made it easy. Um, when I started my own business from home, I didn't pay myself for years and years and years. So I was always kind of wearing the same capri pants and same top. In fact, my uh, my good colleague who's been with me for 14 years, Gemma, at some point took me aside and said, Naomi, if you're the CEO, could you please dress like one? You know, we're sick of seeing the, the active wear in the office and that sort of thing. So I had to I had to wear something and red made, made it really easy because it became like a uniform. Mm -hmm. Though on the weekends, uh, that's the other funny thing is people wouldn't recognise me on the weekends, you know, when I'm wearing jeans and a, you know, jumper or whatever. Oh, so it's just work? It's just work. It's okay. a uniform. As a speaker and in front of audiences, that first blink, you know, people are trying to put you in a box and our job is to make them feel relaxed and that they know what they're going to get. So if you're wearing a lot of bling or you're wearing something very frilly or something, it's actually a distraction for the audience. It gets in the way. So when people see the red, they go, right, we, we know now this is this is her. We can settle. We can listen. Mm -hmm. And those first few seconds in a speaking engagement are really, really important to bring the audience into your story. Probably because I work in fashion, I get very distracted by outfits. Mm -hmm. And I'm always restyling somebody or thinking, oh, I <laughs> could put that necklace or maybe not those shoes or whatever. Yeah, you're right. It takes me a good five minutes to actually listen to what they're saying once yeah, they yeah. get over what they're wearing. Absolutely, because it'll be distracting. Yeah. Whereas when you see me, you go, oh, I know who she is. Mm -hmm. It's the uniform and mm -hmm. you can just settle with me. I am scared that a stylist at some point is going to say, mm, everything's great, but that red's really got to <laughs> no. go. It's just not you. You stick to your guns. You do look great in red. You yeah. really do. It is funny. I, I, I will often hear people say, you know, if I'm in the bathroom or whatever afterwards and people go, oh, that red lady oh. or the red shark so it does oh, it actually has its own name about it as well that's awesome it doesn't really matter to me it's just, my message is more important than yes. than whether they remember my name speaking mm. of your message can you just take me back a little bit into 
before you started Red Balloon, why you started it and how that kind of all played out. When I graduated from university, I had a corporate career and I went off to work for big brands. I worked for a company called IBM. I worked for an airline. I also worked for Apple, which was great. But when I had kids, they were so cute. I thought I really wanted to spend more time with them. And uh, those days, it's a very long time ago, but those days having flexibility at work was almost impossible. Mm. And especially because I had a senior role and that meant that at any point they could have me in Cupertino or wherever. So, uh, and without family around, I said, you know what, I'm going to start one of those dot-com things. Mm -hmm. And even though I didn't know anything about it, because I thought I could play with my kids in the day and I could work at night. Yeah. yeah. Till the kids ganged up on me and said, Mum, why do we have to go to bed at 5.30? I've got work to do. Go to bed. <laughs> so, I've tried that. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, so I started my business to get a lifestyle, but I didn't. I failed at that. I haven't got a lifestyle. <laughs> uh, but it, it, what, an, what an adventure. My children have been involved the whole way through. Mm. Um, starting the business from home, mm -hmm. ended up with nine people in the front room and then, you know, leaving home and... Um, so keeping overheads low. So, yeah, wow. Yeah. And that's brought you to where you are now, which is so many things. So Red Balloon, you're still involved in, yeah. but you're not in the day-to-day -day nitty gritty of it all. No, that's right. Uh, there's a wonderful CEO, David Anderson, who leads the team. Uh, and my job is really to look after key creative messages and it's almost like design. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's more of a, a brand role yeah. than operational, and and that's always uh, been me. I I there was an external um, a CEO appointed about five years ago, so I stopped being the CEO back in two thousand and eleven. Mm -hmm. And that gave me the freedom to go and do some other things, which was wonderful. But I love the business and mm -hmm. I believe in it. And what are those other things? Well, <laughs> I do have a few other businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I'm um, being on Shark Tank. What it, a cool show. It's such a privilege because literally we have the opportunity of seeing people share their ideas, their dreams and their aspirations. Mm -hmm. And that's our job is to encourage them and also give them some commercial insights because to have a dream is not necessarily to build an enterprise and mm -hmm. um, our job is to really manage that and help people grow. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what an opportunity for them to be in front of a panel of experts who are offering not only advice but money yeah. <laughs> uh, to back them to put their idea into the actual reality. Such a great idea. I love it. And you guys are so great. You're so boss. I love it. And I loved the two oh. girls in there just... Well, what's great about having both Janine and I is that we see the world differently. Mm -hmm. So if there was only one female, they'll think we were representing all women when actually, you know, women right. are 50% of the population and mm -hmm. we view the world differently and we have different opinions and she sees an opportunity that I'm going, what on earth is she seeing in that? And right. vice versa, the same way as we would with any of the blokes. Yeah. So I think it's great to have two women on the panel because then we don't get kind of just, oh, she's speaking on behalf of all women. Uh, right. And there has been quite quite some criticism out of the US program that um, they never had two women on set until season five. Oh, wow. So, so just one, one only, woman. Only Barbara and Laurie was always a guest mm -hmm. and they didn't have them appearing together. And then there was a whole thing about women only investing in girly type bu businesses, mm -hmm. whereas we really haven't experienced that here. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we uh, we make sure that we get balanced voice and we give as good as we get, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I don't let Steve get away much you have to you just have to stand up for yourself well it is actually funny in the first season um because people come on set and they're there for you know literally an hour or two hours and we're asking them a lot of questions mm. and then they kind of edit it but it's never the intention of the story has never changed i've never seen them change the intention of the story they just tighten it up because we do ask a lot of questions the same time over and over but that very first season i always felt that i sat back Mm -hmm. And I was waiting for my turn like a good right. girl. Yeah. And I was getting really angry. And I went to the producer and I said, Steve, I saw all the good questions. And he goes, mate, you just asked the same question. It doesn't matter. I'll cut it out. Yeah. So, um, you know, we often sit back and wait for our turn. Mm -hmm. It happens almost everywhere. So when women enter the boardroom, it might be three board meetings before we say anything because mm -hmm. we like to have, we like to understand everything. We mm -hmm. don't want to make a, a deliver. And there I was doing exactly the th thing that I knew. And so then, then I literally, if he would butt in, I would say, actually, I was going to ask that question. And then I'd ask again. And then he'd get frustrated because he'd think, oh, she's trying. So all of a sudden this dynamic really, 
really started between the two of us. And we have a great deal of respect for each other, but we view the world very differently. And I think that makes good TV. I was just about to say, it makes <laughs> great TV. Yeah. He loves to say, oh, what would you know? And I said, oh, probably a little more than I'm going to let you know I know. So, uh, you know. It's, it's healthy we, competition. Yeah, healthy it's competition. Re- it really is. And how do you go with TV? Like, it's such a, it's a different lane to you know, being in a boardroom or starting a business from scratch is a, it's a whole different kind of sphere to be a part of. Do you love it? I, I Look, as I said, I think it's a privilege and it's wonderful to have young people come up to me. Like I literally get pitched every single day. My children get pitched. Oh, no. Their friends go, ask your mum if she thinks this is a good idea. And so it's really quite, <laughs> it's, it's really wonderful. But you see, I, I, my career is in business. And so for me, it's a it's a wonderful opportunity, but it's not my life. Mm-hmm. And so for that reason, I can observe it rather than necessarily get caught up in it. So you're a TV star. You are a LinkedIn influencer. You have uh, almost 2 million followers mm. on LinkedIn. Discuss. So LinkedIn as a platform is usually for people's professional profiles or their CVs or trying to work out who's who in the zoo when it comes to business. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think they realised as a platform is that people weren't using it as much as they would any other social platform and they needed to get people drive traffic there. So they launched an influencer program about four years ago, of which I was one of only two Australians. And so I was riding away and my following was increasing and increasing. And what I found is when that I write on LinkedIn, people are far more curious about the other side of business, which is who am I as a person? Who am I as a parent? Mm. Um, what am I learning? What am I seeing? What, are, what do I see as social trends? And then uh, underlay to that is there is my business career. So they're far more interested in that. And, um, you know, like I'd say things like, um, what does your boss hate about you? And people go, my boss hates me. <laughs> and so that would go viral. Oh, One wow. of the ones I did was leave, like I challenged people, can you go without using your phone in the presence of another human being for 21 days? You know, I go past a bus stop or no matter where, and everybody's always looking at their phones yeah. and nobody's connecting. And yet we used to have conversations with taxi drivers. We used to have conversations with all sorts of people. And now we don't because we're all in, mm. in a restaurant. You know, you sit there on your phone while you're waiting for your friend to mm. come rather than even being present with yourself. So I said, what would it be like for 21 days um, to not use your phone in the presence of another human being? It, it A, went really viral, but B, people were just like, how dare I even suggest that? You know, how could they even survive for 21 days? And we used to. So if we're always on, what time do we have to be creative? And that was my challenge. And what time do we have to connect to people mm. that we don't even know their beauty because yeah. we don't see them? Yeah. I write in the way that I speak, you which, do. which makes it that. easily consumable yep. and yep. people get it. And yep. so that's probably why I have the following. I am consistent. And I think that's the thing with all social media. You need mm. to be consistent. And you need to know what you stand for. Yep. It's the same. Mm-hmm. You need to know what you stand for. If you could condense it down, what your true core beliefs are as a human, as a business person, what would that be in a couple of sentences? Well, I have a personal motto that has served me incredibly well which is, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. Hmm. So I take responsibility for my own life Hmm. and I don't live in a world of blame. Stuff happens, but I take responsibility. So if I was late, it's because Hmm. I didn't leave early enough, not that I blame the ferry or the tram or however I got to work. So I take responsibility and living without blame is a wonderful place to be. So if, you know, things aren't going right at work, what was missing that if I contributed and took responsibility, how would it be different? Now, it's not that I do all the work. I can't do all of the work. Mm. But if it's meant to be, it's up to me. And part of my job as a leader is to challenge people to greatness, Mm -hmm. whether that be my children Mm -hmm. (laughs) or whether it be employees. It's my job is to make sure that people feel completely fulfilled and are proud of their contribution, that they get to do great work. Mm. And so I need to challenge them to that. So my personal motto has served me well, whether it's as a leader in business, as a parent, but I do take responsibility. On being a leader, that was one of my questions for you, is what you think makes a great leader? So to be a leader is to have followers. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that people believe in what you believe. Mm. So there's a difference between management and leadership. And most often in business, people will just kind of forget and they get it all melded together. But leaders, leaders unite everybody to the cause. Our job is to speak of vision, of values and aligning people to Mm -hmm. change the world and make it slightly better. Mm. That's our job as a leader. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Versus being a manager, and managers nurture the individual's uniqueness mm-hmm. for the good of the cause. So mm-hmm. they're nurturers. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not particularly good at that one. I'm much better at being a leader than a manager, and knowing that is also quite powerful. Yeah, it's having the vision. Mm. You see the big picture. This is where we're going. Who's coming? Yeah, correct. Yeah, and making sure I say it over and over and over again, mm-hmm. and that people really own it. And, and then uh, hiring a manager to take care of everyone's correct. feelings. <laughs> As the gorgeous Gemma says, I think she says, I'm the detail in her devil. You know, <laughs> we all need great people around us. Yes. Mm. Do you have great people around you? Incredible people mm. around me. Really, really incredible. Um, and, you know, we have a laugh as well. Like, it's, all, it's, it's actually not that serious. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. what I like about you. Yeah. Well, You're all serious on the outside, but... Like, not really. The best fun ever. Yeah, I have a great old time. Love I it. think we're hilarious on the show, but you know, <laughs> you know, that's our sense of humour, I suppose. Yeah. Do you feel like men and women lead differently? There are some fundamental differences in just our makeup. Um, we will sit back and wait until we view the whole world and making sure that we say the right thing at the right time and we will wait our turn off and like good girls and I've done it myself mm-hmm. much to my own chagrin versus really jumping in mm-hmm. and unfortunately also powerful women articulate women often get called bossy boots mm. if I go back to when I was in grade two <laughs> year two my teacher wrote on my report card and I remember it vividly um, rather bossy with her friends and so my parents took me aside and said sweetie you know sweetie you're very bossy and I I didn't even know what bossy was and I said what do you mean and they said you know you've got to let your friends have a turn at playing the games they want to play and I said but mum they're not playing the good games that's why I choose the games you know whatever it was yeah but it was interesting that I needed to get some coaching from a very early Mm -hmm. age on my bossiness (laughs) And I, I was I was completely unaware of it. Yeah. Um, so being articulate often gets mis- misconstrued as being, you know, I'm just forthright. I'm just yeah, like, let's not hang around. Let's yeah. keep going, mm-hmm. you know. So it includes our ability to relate to others, maybe our EQ, our emotional Mm. intelligence, rather than necessarily just our um, business acumen, to have some semblance of understanding about how this might impact other people. And those businesses who have female leaders and senior females are more profitable than those who only have male leaders. Mm -hmm. And when you think that, you know, 50 percent of the audience and the customers are likely to be women it just doesn't make any sense so what I don't want to see is is women pretending to be men now I believe there's a there are some real reasons why we don't have more women in leadership given that we've been battling this now my mother worked on the first computer in Australia way back in the 1960s oh, wow. in the maths department so I've had fabulous role models but I think the lack of role models means that people uh, as they don't necessarily relate and they don't know their way to get through. Mm-hmm. The other thing, I've, I've known many senior women of my peers in corporate who just actually get jack of it. They're mm-hmm. just like, really, I'm not getting things done. And if there's something I see, I do see women, especially if they're choosing between how much time they're spending with family and home. Mm-hmm. If the cost is too great, mm-hmm. then they will ultimately choose family. Yeah. And so they just choose and they go, actually, I'm sick of playing this game of politics. Yeah. It's it's not my natural place to be. I just want to do great work. Mm-hmm. I want to make a difference to other human beings. Mm-hmm. I want to go home feeling proud and accomplished. And then I move on. But so that's there is real reasons and it's some it is also to do with organizational structure. Mm. And so we're not we've not really addressed all these things. What brings you the most joy in your life? Oh, look, I'm deeply besotted and in love. And that's yes. gorgeous. So uh, sharing wonderful experiences with my beautiful Stuart is gorgeous. Because you've recently gotten married last end of last year. Yeah. We only met about five years ago. And so um, our children came together as teenagers. And, you know, they're very different. All of them are very different. But they have a respect for each other. They're so different. Yeah. And, um But watching them blossom and choose their own journey is very interesting. Yeah. But they're all adults now. So, yeah. yeah, it's like a different phase of life, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I'm so far from that life. Yeah. Not so far. <laughs> but, it, you know, I, people often say, people have asked me, oh, you know, what do you want for your children? And they expect me to say happy. Mm. And I must admit, I saw this headline once that Naomi Simpson doesn't want her children to be happy. That's not quite true. It's just that happiness is one of the many, many emotions, many human emotions. Mm. I want my children to be resilient. 
Hmm. I want them to be responsible and I want them to be respectful. And my job as a parent is to make sure I set the parameters and the values, but they need to fail themselves. They Hmm. need to fall over Hmm. and learn to pick themselves up. The balance of that is, I think, the hardest thing in the whole world, being the, the mother, the career woman, trying to do it all. Can we actually do it all? Or is that a myth? What are we, we can trying do, to do we here? We can do everything we choose to do, everything, but make a powerful choice. Mm-hmm. Like really choose what you want to do. So what in fact- What did you choose? I chose that chose. I wanted to, my, I had great role models. Mm-hmm. I was not gonna give up my corporate career just because I was a mum. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do something worthwhile. Mm-hmm. And interestingly enough now, as my daughter finishes university, she wrote to me and she said, mum, I just wanna be, I want to be what you have created in my own career and she's chosen maths as a career. But you see, she has a role model, she has somebody. And we were talking about this mother guilt and how frantic we often are if we're not home by three and we're not you know, doing all the things that we need to do. But actually, as long as they're safe and they've got somebody to look after them and they're it takes, a, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm. And actually different viewpoints, I think, is very great. Mm. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. Yeah. And yours are great. <laughs> They're really good. <laughs> They're really good. My son just told me on, on Sunday, actually, that he's going jackarooing. So he will not be seeing this. He probably won't even see any of the episodes of Shark Tank because where he's going in the middle of Australia, he's taking a gap year from his studies. Wow. And he's just going into the middle of Australia to be a cowboy. It's my boy. To anyone who's an entrepreneur or a budding business person, what would be your little pearls of wisdom that they can inject into their situation right now? You know, I think it's really important that you do have a dream, but you also got to balance that dream. There's a difference between uh, persistence and pig-headedness. Mm. But to create your dream, you'll need four things. You'll need some passion. That's your energy, the energy that really drives you. You'll need to be persistent. You've got to stick at it. Nothing happens overnight. You'll need to be positive and see the upside in everything. Mm. But you'll also need to be purposeful. And purposeful is about how you contribute to others. It's not just about you. When you contribute to others, you make the world a better place. And it does not seem like work. Oh my gosh, you're Oprah. We had fun and a lovely cup of tea. Thank you, Naomi. Jules. Yeah. I'm writing. Someone write all of that down and put it in my diary. I'm reading it every day. I love it. Cheers. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. So my pleasure. And I appreciate your outfit. Oh, thank you. I was trying to relax, and you've got all corporate on me. I know. I went corporate fashion chic. <laughs> so fantastic. Thank you, Naomi. Cheers. Thanks.